Hi everyone, Rebecca here. Um, I just uh, created this look with my eyes and this is my part two video and this is going to be finishing this dramatic holiday look and going into um, the foundation portion of this look. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the very first thing that I do before I do my foundation is I use my um, Estee Lauder's Idealist. This is an even skin uh, tone illuminator. And I just put a couple of pumps of that. And it usually only takes two pumps because two pumps will deliver quite a bit of product. It has a shimmer to it. And this is a correcting skin tone serum. So what I do is I just place that on with my fingers and I just kind of dab it all over the face. And I'm actually going to be skipping my eye area since that area already has makeup on it. It already has primer on it. So I'm going to be skipping that area, but I am going to get getting all the other areas of my face. And that creates a really nice base. So the very next thing that I do, of course, is I go into my Avon Magic. And I'm actually using an Avon Magic that is tinted today. Um, but you can use whatever you choose. And I'm actually using this little brush, which is the concealer brush. And the reason why I'm using the concealer brush is this um, Magic is a fluffy consistency. And I want to just kind of pop it on my face wherever I would no normally put my foundation. But this little jar is so small that my big brush will not fit into it. And I don't want to crush my big Sigma brushes down into this little jar. So I'm just going to take my time and use the little brush where I need it. So once I've got my dabbles where I want them to be, I kind of fill that little blemish there. And once I've got my little dabbles where I want to be, I'm actually going to reach for a kabuki brush and kind of buff this foundation in. I found that the kabuki brush just gives me the nicest color payoff. And, um, and I know it's kind of an unconventional way to put your um, foundation on. But it seems like the bristles of this kabuki brush oops, here in my face and um, really deliver a nice flawless finish. So I just hit that kabuki brush very lightly across the product. And then I kind of look back once I'm finished blending. I kind of look back and it gives me a natural looking face. Um, it covers and conceals what it needs to. And um, but without being too dark, because my face color can actually stay untrue in the picture. And um, and also my face color can come through. So once I've got that on, a lot of times I don't even put a foundation. But I do like to set um, any uh, any cream style patterns. So what I do is I use my light. <laughs> What I use is I use the Elf High Def powder to set, and because it is a cream, I use just a big powder brush, and I kind of feather it off out there so it's not going to fall all over my computer or the tabletop. And you can kind of see the powder falling now. I do find that this foundation color is a little bit lighter than I would care for. And so what I do after I have my foundation on is I actually go back in with a warmer color and kind of warm it up at the foundation. So the color that I use to warm up is a Physician's Formula, and this is a Mineral Wear Face Powder, and this is in the color Sand Beige. And I really like this because this is very close to my natural skin color. And sometimes when I take that color away, I use this powder. And this powder kind of sets everything. I do use it with just a basic powder puff. 
and what that does is it allows me to put some of that color back into my face. I have naturally oily skin, so it's good for me to set everything with a nice powder. But I do notice that because I am a little older, that sometimes the powder sets into the fine lines. So this is how I combat that. I actually reach in and I have a little bit of a, um, a setting spray. And this is the um, setting spray. The label has come off. And um, this is the Urban Decay's um, All Nighter setting spray. And, um, and I just keep refilling it now because this is a little small like sample travel size and the little labor thing you came off of it, but I just refill it from my bigger bottle now. <laughs> it works. So I just set my makeup with that. Try not to get anything in your mouth because it does not have a pleasant taste. And I let that set up. And I find that when I do that, it not only sets me makeup, it makes it stay on a lot um, of staying power, but it also helps me to um, lose some of the chalkiness or some of the cakiness that comes because I don't have a perfect complexion, but that helps it to um, kind of push out from that and create a little bit more of a dewiness on the face. So the next thing that I like to do is highlight my eye area. And I can steal my under eyes, and I also um, set that. So what I like to use for that is the um, the mark, the Get Bright Hookup Highlighter. Um, this is perfect for both concealing my under eyes and also bringing some light to that area. So I literally just dot that on. And I go easy because I have created my eye look also. So what I do is I kind of go easy with that. And then I'm going to use that same little conceal brush that we did before. And I'm just going to simply lay that flat and create that look here. And what I do is like to kind of create a small triangle, upside down triangle, however we like to prefer it. And I just like to take my time with this. I will say one thing about the Mark hookup um, that I don't like, and that is that um, it is very fast drying. So you have to um, you have to work quickly with that highlighter. That's one of the things that I don't like about it. It's very fast drying, and it seems that um, if you put an under eye underneath of it, Sometimes it does gum up if you don't work fast enough. But now that has created a nice light underneath the eye. And I'm going to set that. And I don't like to set it with the um the light the light um high gas powder by e.l.f. I actually like to use the e.l.f. the e.l.f. mineral blush uh kit and this is in the color clear. And I find that this has just enough of a light infusing property that it reflects the light real nicely. So I just put it on with a little fluffy brush. This is the um, E40 and it's an eyeshadow blending brush, but it works perfectly for that area of the face. So I just kind of take it in the brush. I give it a little swirl around and then tap it off on the edge. And I just place that and cover my concealer. I usually don't reload the brush because I find that if I do, um, if I do, it's almost too much product. So I do like to reload the brush, and, and this is for the very tops of the cheekbone, and I like to use it as a cheekbone highlight and kind of stick the tops of the cheekbone. Now, I go back into a deeper color, and I'm going to grab another one of these little brushes that I have with me. 
the same style, same style shader brush. This is just a clean one. And I'm going to go into the NYC. This is the NYC in Sun to Sun bronzer, just a little dual bronzer that I got. And I'm actually going to use the lighter side of that bronzer and pick that up. And I'm going to sculpt out the cheekbone. I'm also going to go up onto my temple and create that I've lost some weight portion of the temple. And just a little bit down into the T-zone area to create where natural light would hit the face. Again on this side, sculpt out the cheekbone. Up onto the temple, into that I've lost weight recently little area there of the temple. And sometimes I even round out here where my cupid's bow is. Or actually that's not a cupid's bow. That's the widow's peak. This is the cupid's bow. That's the widow's peak. Get it right. And I take the deeper color from this palette, and I actually run that along the jawline there. Okay, so the very next thing that I do, I'm going to take this. Um, this is called Strawberry Milk. It's an NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil. And I actually put that right to the cupid's bow. And I purposely go into that little lip area, and I also put some on the bottom, right there. And then I take a either a flat top kabuki or some other type of fluffy brush, and I just really just go right over it. And that way, the shimmer is there, but the um, the actual um, what am I trying? The highlight is there, but the shimmer isn't. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, the next thing I do is line the lips. And because we have such amazing cheekbones going, or eyes going on, I'm not going to focus much on the lip. So what I do with the lip is I actually have a nude color lip liner, and this is called Nutmeg. It's by NYC also. And um, they they have just sent me this. This is from their new line. And um, it's NYC. It's called Nutmeg. And I actually, yeah, it is a lip liner pencil. Because sometimes the the eyeliner pencils, and um, they, they do double up. But this is a lip liner. It's in the color Nutmeg. And I don't try to cover up that shimmer that we created. I actually leave that there. Just going to create a real small um, look for the lip. And the very next thing that I'm going to do for the lip is just top it off with just some kind of a nudie type gloss. And the nude gloss that I'm using, I'll find it here. I want to show you the right one. It is also from the NYC collection or I'm sorry, in my X collection, and it is called Sweetheart. And it has this adorable little bow on the top of it. Can you see that? Adorable little bow. I just love the NYX line.
And that completes my holiday look for a um, romantic um, party look for Valentine's Day or the holiday. And I hope that you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. And I hope that you will stay tuned for my next video, which is a look on how to accessorize yourself with jewelry. Uh, based on your face shape and also based on the outfits and hairstyles that you wear because it makes a big difference with the line of your jewelry. So I hope that you will stay tuned for that next video and until next time, stay beautiful.